You ever been practicing your guitar and been like, man, I'm playing practically the same thing over and over and over again, and I want it to sound spicier. I want it to sound better. I want it to feel easier. Any of those. Well, you're in luck because I'm gonna show you a few tips that may help you transition between chords better, may help you spice up your chord voicings, and might just help you have a little bit more fun when you're practicing playing your chords. One thing I like to do is keep everything relatively in the same key, that way our ears aren't thrown off too much whenever we're talking about tricks and tips, so I'm gonna do my best to keep it in E major, D major, and A major. I may end up transitioning to the people's key of G major just to show you one or two other things. So let's dive right in to these tricks that I'm talking about. One of the biggest things that you can do to spice up your chord playing is changing the voicing of it. One way that I like to do that is play pieces of bar chords in different areas of the neck. So if we were playing an A major, that's gonna be A, E, and D. So what I can do instead of playing A, E, and D, right there, even though that sounds really good, I can come up here and play Basically what that is, is I'm playing the exact same chords, I'm just changing the way it's voiced as far as what order the notes of the chord are coming in, and they're on different parts of the neck, so it's going to make the notes sound different than the open position. And really what I just did is I took an A major bar chord, a C shaped E, and a D shaped E but I just played pieces of them. That sounds super melodic, and if you speed it up, it's actually part of the verses, I believe, to Crazy Train, which is kind of crazy to think about that this sounds super sweet on an acoustic, but speed it up and add a little bit of distortion on electric guitar, and you've got Ozzy Osbourne. Also, the voicing that I played up here was just an A with the C shape. Sounds really cool to finish that off with. Keeping the same energy going, we can actually take this and use the open A string and use, use it as a pedal tone. Since those chords are in the key of A, that A pedal tone is going to sound really good and that's applicable to open E and the open D. If you play the chords that are associated with those keys, it's going to sound pretty good. Now there's a song that I've been playing for years and I honestly do not know the name of it. A buddy of mine showed it to me a long time ago, but it got me thinking that if you play something in the open position like a piece of a C add 9 and you figure out other spots of the neck to play and it sounds good, put it together and you might make a pretty cool song. So what I'm gonna do is play that piece of that song that I'm talking about. Normally I believe it's supposed to be finger picked, but you can, you can strum it as well. And just listen how cool this sounds to just take this fragmented C add nine shape and move it around the neck. That's a really cool concept to take and play with 
the chord shapes and move them all over the neck and see if they sound good together. You never know, you might write a really cool sounding song just by playing around with it like that. And also let me know in the comments below what that song is and who the band is. It's escaped my memory and I haven't heard it in so long that I've completely forgotten who it's by. Another trick, it's not necessarily gonna make your chords sound better, but it is gonna help make your transitions sound better because it's gonna help you get from chord to chord quicker. One thing that I like to do if I'm playing chords is I like to see if they share a common fingering or a common string or anything like that. So in this case, if we take E, A, and D, they kind of share the index finger. Whenever we create a, whenever we fret an E major chord, our index finger is on the G string. Well, it, whenever we fret a D chord, our index finger is still on that G string, it's just moved up a fret. And then if we fret the A chord, just like this, it stays exactly where it's at. So we could actually play like this. And that's actually something I wish I would have figured out a little bit sooner, especially with the A chord, because I do believe that an A chord with that high E ringing out does sound a little bit better than this. Yes, it's the same chord, but having that high E string ringing out just adds a little extra size and melody to the chord. And that's not the only chords that do that. You see people playing their G like this because it helps them transition to the D. That's super helpful if you're gonna be playing those chords together on a consistent basis. Me, however, I also like to fret my G like this because it helps me go to my E minor. And also, whenever I'm fretting my G like this, if I wanna play a C normally, it's really not that long of a stretch for me to take my middle finger and my, my ring finger and just move it down to the floor one string. So little tricks like that are definitely gonna help with the transition between chords and while we're on the subject of chord transitions, another really cool trick, and you probably heard me do it, is when we're in the open position, especially in the key of G, we can strum the open strings in between the chords, and it's gonna sound good because all of those notes are in the key of G, and your ear isn't really gonna pick up on it if you're listening to it. So we could just play G, D, and C. So there you have it, a couple of tricks to help you spice up your chord playing a little bit. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if it was. Let me know in the comments below if it wasn't. And if you like the video, run up, bear hug that like button for me. If you wanna know a little bit more about spicing up your rhythm playing, I'll leave a video right here that I think you'd enjoy. And remember, practice doesn't necessarily make you perfect, but it can make you okay. We'll see you on the next one.